Low back pain is one of the most common and frustrating problems that plagues civilization. Now there's a very good reason why it's almost epidemic, which I will get to you. Get to. But first of all I'm going to tackle why is back pain so confusing. It's confusing because there are so many different diagnoses. For instance, one of the most common problems we see here in the clinic is a slipped or bulging disc, where the disc is hitting a nerve root and causing something like sciatica, um, although sometimes it will just be back pain. Another very common cause is sacroiliac joint problems. The sacroiliac joints are joints at the back of the pelvis, so this back, and so the sacroiliac joints are here, but also there's the front of the sacroiliac joints here, and these can be sprained just by sitting for 20 minutes. Then there are, of course, muscle imbalances, and there's problems with the other joints, other ligaments can sprain, there can be arthritis in the area, there can be referred pain from other areas, such as your gut, um, and also, sometimes gut problems can be caused by the back and go vice versa and they tend to actually aggravate each other a lot. And then there can be nutritional deficiencies such as magnesium and vitamin D3. There can be problems with your feet or your knees or your hips causing your back to be a problem. One leg can be shorter than the other. It can be your balance receptors in your neck or your jaw that can cause this as well. Emotional stress and tension is another major cause of back problems. And of course you may not have symptoms in any of these other areas at all. The only way the true nature of your back problem is going to be revealed is if someone takes into account your jaw, your feet, your muscle balances, your nutritional protocols, your, the amount of stress you're under. Now a medical doctor of course is going to be great for spotting things like cancer, infections that can cause back problems, very very serious things that have to be ruled out and checked for. And then there's also your heart. Your heart can actually cause you to stoop and cause your back muscles to tense a lot more. And you may not have any other signs that you've got a heart problem and it may be manifesting as a back problem. So getting a proper diagnosis for your back is really, really important. Don't just sit there or lie there and suffer the back pain and just take painkillers. Make sure that you see someone who's got years and years of experience with coping with back problems and they don't just say, oh, where's the pain, point to it, um, wiggle your leg about and give you a diagnosis. It's much harder than that to really come up with the real issue. So why is back pain so prevalent? Well, it really starts because at the age of five, we go to school and we get told to sit still. And that is one of the worst things that can happen to your back. Because just like sugar rots teeth, sitting still pretty much rots your spine and your spinal muscles. At the age of five, our back is not fully developed, not fully grown, the muscles haven't fully got to where they should be. And so before our back is even as strong as it should be, it's already decaying, thanks to sitting still. Now, of course, I'm not against school, but I am saying that there should be a lot more movement and we should really be learning standing up and doing a lot more standing things as we're developing. Everyone should go through a back rehabilitation program and start doing spinal hygiene exercises from the age of five, in my opinion. This is why I checked my kids from birth and try and encourage them to exercise and check their spine on a regular basis. Now I will put some links here to some of the most sort of common causes of back pain, slip discs, sacroiliac joint problems and some links to some videos, some exercise videos to help you should you need it. As